This is awesome. No wind. Nice weather. It's just summer walking up this one. Fantastic. Sandy McNabb in Turner Valley. Alrighty, we're in this guy today. Sandy McNabb Hill. Okay, let's see here. I am parked at the sign. I'm gonna walk in here. I'm gonna walk in the High Noon Hills about here-ish, go up, and then over here. And from then on, I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe I'll walk all the way over here and then back along this. Yeah, see what's going on. All right, today I put on the old sunscreen. It's so nice out. I know a lot of people don't put on sunscreen just because they don't burn. Well, you want us to believe you can't get skin cancer just because you don't burn. Ugh, get back in the car, too much wind. Go look up Home, home uh, Made Wanderlust, the YouTube channel, uh, Dixie. She just went and got a precancerous mole removed from her face. And the doc was like, That's a little, you're a little young for this. Well, she's done uh, the Triple Crown and the Camino del Santiago. And, you know, after a few weeks, she just stopped using sunscreen. So, precancerous mole. She's like 32. So yeah, it can happen to you. All right, I've walked probably 7,800 meters since my car on the road. Here's where you go in. One of the accesses to High Noon Hills. There's kind of a stream here, so I'm wondering what I gotta do to get across that. Maybe it's just a culvert over here. Looks like it is, actually. Yep. Culverts, and it is like plus 15 out here so of course this is just gonna be you know half raging over here right all right I got some pools of water to deal with here I've done high noon hills but I haven't done this little section this access so this will be new uh, I went over here but my feet broke through and so they are already wet. Your feet always get wet during a winter hike. It's just really, really early for that. Oh well. well. There's lots and lots of snow, but it is melting, melting, melting. Like crazy. Here in the woods, it just never seems to gather as much. Back there was still some pretty deep parts. But now that I'm out of the wind, it's quite pleasant. Just really about dodging mud and stuff. This access is used by an outfitter, so there's uh, a lot of horses and stuff, so those tend to be kind of muddy. Well, there we go. There's the primary High Noon Hill. That sure as hell didn't take long. All right, well, I'm already at this intersection. If you go down that way, you're gonna go down a Sheep River. Up here is sort of the coal. Well, that's where I'm headed. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, if you keep going down here and go back out, access one. Came from down here, some pretty major, you know, cow trails and stuff. I'm gonna go down here, getting into some new area. When I did the High Noon Hills, I went down here about 100 meters before I uh, realized I was going the wrong damn way. Well, I went 
went too far again. I followed that ridge there for a little ways down there. I should kind of come down here, go down there, and then cross that creek. All right, the mouth is on. I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta cross this gooey sludge down here. This could be interesting. Okay, so. That, I mean, that's up to there. That is uh, probably a few inches above the ankle. As you can see, I'm pretty close. I'm gonna jump as far as I can and hope I don't break through. That's all I can really do. I think I'll jump over here, actually. That looks a little more solid. Okay, no problem. Get over here. Get off all this water, all this ice, so I don't fall through. And we even got some hitching posts over here. Maybe these outfitters come down here too. Maybe it's supposed to be a fence, I don't know. Anyway. Well, now it's a pleasant walk through the forest. Bit of a trail for me to follow. Not the easiest thing ever, but there are some footprints, so that helps. Awesome. Broken out of the trees. Go see what the Sheep River looks like. Uh, looked like a sheer drop off, but it wasn't. I don't get that one yet. All right, now I gotta turn right and start walking along over here. Look at this. This is gonna be such a beautiful view to hike to. This is beautiful in here, but one thing about this area is they're, they're gonna be encountering a lot of cow plop. Cow trails. Oh, this is delightful. Look at this. This is awesome. Pretty sure that's my hill up there. You couldn't ask for a better approach. Right, this is, oh, this is just excellent right now. Perfect. It looks like wet feet if I ever saw it. Looks like someone or a moose or something crossed. I get up there, I can kind of hear water still, or I can head down there, and I think I'm gonna go and do that. Not sure where the water's going. It doesn't seem to be coming out over there. Is it going underground? Guess I'll see. All right, still got water, it's just not all pooled up. So what you get with the uh, the major mouth is going on, right? Kind of cool. I mean, this area wouldn't normally have this, obviously. It's all grass. All right, let's see here. See if I can pull this off. All right. Got some snow on my boots, but that's all good. I mean, obviously, I got my feet wet a long time ago, but... There's a big difference between cold wet and warm wet. I'll take warm wet any day of the week. I'm surprised this is the first time I found a fire pit. Like it is just a beautiful spot. But then check this out. Look at these two. Why wouldn't you just use that pit? Why would you make new ones? They look pretty recent too. Oh well. Well, I think I'm at a bit of a crossroads. Here's that hill that I was looking at. Trail continues in here. There's sort of a loop you can do in here, right? Like you can walk quite a ways down and then come back and hit this hill on the way back. Here there's a big opening. There's lots of openings and lots of options. It's very easy to bushwhack. You can do all kinds of stuff back here. I'm gonna continue straight. I'm gonna catch that hill on the way back. And uh, yeah, very obvious, clear cow trail going through here. Okay, well, apparently along here, there's a, like just up here, there's a trail that's lower down. It zigs down to the Sheep River and there's actually a picnic table. Well, that sounds pretty cool. We'll see if I can't, uh, 
you know, it's described backwards. It's described going the other way. So it's tough to, but it says just before you cross a couple of shallow draws. Well, here's the draws. So that should be just over there or someplace. Well, I'm following this trail west, which is easy because I was walking west anyway. It doesn't go down here. This seems like a super nice place to get down to the river. Well, I'll, follow, I'll trust the book for a ways still. Keep going here. I'd love to find a picnic table. That'd be, that'd be cool. Who the hell would have put it there? Beautiful Sheep River. The water's like flowing right over top of the ice. That's pretty cool. Boy, what a nice little spot. Out of the wind and everything. I'm gonna hunt around for this picnic table. The guide, some of it is updated as to the 2013 flood and some of it is not. So it's very reasonable. Certainly it could have got swept away in 2013. Hey guys. Well, no luck. All I see is what I think is very clearly 2013 devastation. Like this is what, this is what it did, right? A lot of these rivers are just piled high with, yeah. So I mean, and I can't even find wreckage. If I could, that would make it uh, very obvious. I'm gonna hunt around a bit more, but I think, I think it's gone. I really do. Well, I found my way a lot of the devastation and I found this. Now that doesn't mean anything. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of bridges and stuff wiped out. To me, that's not clearly from a picnic table. So I'm gonna keep looking around. There's the river over there. It's pretty obvious that it took over all this during the flood, like, look at all this. Here's another big manicured piece of wood. Part of a bridge, I'd say. But yeah, it's pretty obvious the bridge, the river came up and just, you know, put this big line of crap here. So I think, I think, uh, I think I pretty much call it. Yep. Well, still quite a nice spot to, Go check out the river. Of course, now we gotta climb back up and out of here. All right, I finally got out of this. Climbed up into these trees. I finally, it wasn't until I got out into this open area that I noticed, finally got the trail back, something clear and, clear and obvious. There's another hill. There's a bunch of hills here. Sandy McNabb Hill, but it really should be like three or four. And then there's that guy over there. Okay, I've arrived at a gap between the two hills. And here I recognized and see from the book that this is the loggers loop, the uh, Sandy McNabb. And it even says at a post, turn right. So, okay, that's like in order to take the way back. All right, so I'm supposed to follow this till I get to a fence and then start heading up the fence. It's gonna get a lot easier because, I mean, right now I'm still following the directions backwards, but when I go back up that way, it's much easier to follow the book's directions when you're going the correct direction. Okay, that was fast. All right, now I'm supposed to climb up along the fence and get off the logger loop which I honestly found pretty boring when I did it. You know what, I changed my mind. All right, I'm back on the logger's loop. So you can connect up with this trail farther along the Sandy McNabb. And then I'll take all the hills in one direction. Oh, I like that a lot better than going up there and then coming back down the exact same way. I never love doing that. I'd much rather make a loop out of it. So, boy, this is icy though. Groomed trails sure make for icy trails. Okay. That there roughly is the gap where I got on here. I've come down here. I think I gotta go up to about here-ish. 
All right. Okay, and that goes down to the interpretive trail. And you get to a sign, turn right, or in this case, you just keep going straight. I think that's pretty obvious, so that's it. Okay, no more boring forest walking. Straight on over nothing but hills. All the way back. And then probably a bit of more forest walk. No worries. <laughs> Finally get to climb these hills I've been hiking along for the last, you know, hour and a half, whatever it's been. For some reason, these hills aren't on the topo maps. It's kind of weird. Oh, this is awesome. Woo! Let's go over to that one. These are always pretty impressive, man. How much work does it take to do this? Something, man. All right, I'm gonna keep you out of the wind. But this is pretty cool little feature here. It's just carved right out. It's like someone took a big knife and carved a big chunk out of the hill all the way down. in the Red Rock Conservation Area or Grand Canyon or something like look at the rest of it. Pretty cool. Gotta say. It's a neat feature. Alright, I still got all these to conquer. More to do. Down here is the gap. You know, I you can kind of see the trail there. You can actually see some cows and stuff too. They think they're cows. And uh, in here they don't climb up. This is pretty cool. Such an odd feature. Look at the rest of the hills. And then look at this. And look at the view. Another nice shot of this. Back at the post off of Logger's Loop. Now I just walk up here a little bit and go up that hill. Not really a trail, but it's unbelievably easy to see where you're going. Very, very easy bushwhacking. Oh, that's the trail I walked earlier. Almost got this guy conquered off. No wind right now, that's nice. You get a great view and you don't have wind, that's pretty sweet. Okay, that's my next goal. Got to go down in here. And then apparently it's not as steep at this, as this guy though, so I won't have to zigzag. Well, it's one thing to find uh, some kind of native lodge and stuff. So here we got some old piece of timber. And then, oh, hello. There's a piece of rope hanging up. I'm going to untangle it right here. I am going to go ahead and say that this was a, what do they call it? You uh, climb up there and you sit in there and you wait for stuff to shoot when you're hunting. That's my guess. But uh, yeah, maybe they hung bait off this thing. Who knows? Cool, random, totally random. I think this is porcupine. Getting all the bark off these trees. We got one over here, looks quite cleaned off. 
and then there's even one that's partially down so he must have crawled up it eating the bark kind of cool starting to wonder what it is that does this you can see that it's pretty recent huh. I'll go look it up I'll flash it up if I find it This is awesome. No wind. Nice weather. It's just summer walking up this one. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful forest walking. Barely any snow at all. They don't get better no better than this. A lot of ways. Oh. These guys are not worried about me and they are, they have got some big horns. They look like they're tagged too. Now, yeah, look at the camera, not them. See how they react as I give them a nice big loop. I don't see any females around. Why is there just two males? Okay. Still got it zoomed in, so sorry if it's shaky. They're still not budging. Not even gonna bother trying to show them because I know I'll never keep them in shot. Oh, hello. Yeah, they look like they got stuff hanging from their on their horns. I'm giving them a nice wide burp and they haven't moved. They haven't moved. This is zoomed in all the way. I'm staying well back of them. There, that's how far I am for real. If you ever find a skull with those horns on it, pick it up. Their heads are all bone. And those horns, they can do some damage. If they decided to come gore me, I'd be, uh, I'd have some broken ribs and, oh yeah. So yeah, you want to respect those guys. You really do. Anyway, I'm going to go down to this thing. And I might check out this. There appears to be a big lump of dirt or rock just sticking out there. I'm going to go look at that. The bottom of a downed tree just 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 looked funny from up there this is a big pile of dirt anyway well I'm back here I walked all the way up here so I have finished the loop with the hills and such you know a and B now I could walk back all the way along here I know it's quite nice I also know it's kind of the long way. Or I could walk up this logging road over here and it intercepts with uh, Logger's Loop. How do I know? Well, because when I did Logger's Loop, I put a little uh, waypoint on there. It said, weird intersection. And it's like 200 meters that way. So, and there's a bunch of other stuff that kind of breaks off Logger's Loop. And so, yeah, I'm going to go in there and see what kind of adventure I can find, even if it is a bunch of logging roads. It's always, uh, it's always fun. I'll probably just end up back on the road at some point, big road walk. But uh, what can I say? I love adventure. Well, here's Logger's Loop, the sign pointing you down the correct direction with a bunch of bullet holes, of course. This is where I came from. That's why I marked it down. I was like, what the hell is this? So yeah, it leads to that back part of the valley. I'll walk around, walk on Logger's Loop for a bit. I have another weird intersection up there marked off. I might take that straight out to the road or 
if I find something else that goes that way, I will go check it out. Logger's Loop is one of the most boring trails I've ever been on. I did it uh, trying to just walk all the trails in Sandy McNabb. It was amazing how much I have voluntarily come and walked it today. The thing about walking back in here is I've kind of condemned myself to a bunch of snow. This is a four-way intersection. That is the rest of Logger's Loop going west. That probably just brings you, I imagine, just brings you right out to the road. That's where I came from. That's the other part of Logging Loop. And this is the one I want to go check out. So I think, woo! I think I might put on my snowshoes. I think this is going to bring me out to the old, uh, you know, there used to be some kind of ranch over here. So let's go check it out. All right. First time I got the snowshoes on all day. Seems like a random logging road. I don't know if anyone's taking care of it, but there's absolutely no trees down on it. Clearly when they logged, it was decades ago. I think it's just gonna intercept a bunch of the kind of logging road area below high noon hills. One of the ways you can walk into them, you know, underneath them. I don't know who, but somebody is taking care of it. There's the other piece over there. That was chainsaw work. Well, from what I can tell, this is a T intersection. We got ourselves a big old hunter's platform. Do these guys like haul, do they haul a ladder out to get up to this thing? Or are they just more athletic than you would imagine hunters to be. I know that they have to carry their stuff out of here unless they bring like a, oh, I don't know. They'll probably get up that, up that. Anyway. Okay. Back at the hunters platform. I went down there a ways. I thought this was still the road. It peters out very quickly. So yeah. They have cross country ski tracks here. Going up that way, there's also a fence over there. That's the direction I want to go. You know, the that definitely curls and goes that way, but that's the wrong direction. I mean, I want to go down there. So I'm going to head this direction, which pretty much is going to bring me back to the road, civilization. And yeah, get my butt back to the car. Well, I'm completely... Uh, Bushwhacking now, making it up as I go. This is uh, Prairie Creek again. Or I guess it's Long Prairie. I could snowshoe through the deep stuff here, but I think I'll probably cross and just climb up there and walk along that. Well, that was a good practice for the summer season. It's so brown and sludgy that, you know, you really just had to put your foot somewhere and then try to find something solid to step on and couldn't see. Oh well, I would have crossed it back over there anyway and it could be, could have been just as bad as this, right? I mean, it's always gonna be worse later on in the day, especially when you're talking like a day that's plus 15 or something. All right, well. Head on back. Yeah, it is nice hiking along here. Two feet of snow, no snow. I knew that I would have worked really hard to not cross this thing. I would have been, look at all that. That would have been pretty tough snowshoeing. And then I would have had to do it all the way to the road where there's probably a bridge over it. But you know, over here in the uh, nice, just hiking along in the grass, alongside of a little creek. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Whatever that ranch was that was over here, I found it. But I don't know, I don't know its status. 
this somebody's private property? Oh, I got more buildings down there. This one here, it's hard to tell. It looks pretty run down, beat up. But the other ones look like they have tin roofing on them. Hmm. That belong to like one of the outfitters that's over there that brings people out on trail rides. I'm still, according to my app, I'm still half a kilometer from the road. Hmm. I'm gonna walk over here, see if I can't find my way around this, or at least find my way to uh, find something that says no trespassing or whatever. Now the buildings are way down there. This is completely nice and broken snow. So I feel like at least no one's gonna come and shoot me while I'm trying to get around this. Oh, it's another fence. Ooh, come on. Oh, and then they got a big, this big gate is open for the corral. Well, I found my way around and through all the fences. I only ended up having to go through one more. And I'm pretty sure this big clearing up here is the one that's just below High Noon Hills. Not the one I took today, but the one that most people take. And, you know, they'll go in there and sled and ride they'll make they'll make jumps for the snowboard and skis and all that make snow bit snow uh snowman all that it's kind of a fun little place well this comes down here and it makes a huge swamp which i just had to traipse through you know it came up to came up to here about my feet are freezing well, I asked for it. You know, if you're gonna go off and do stuff, you know, just wander around, look for stuff, sometimes you're gonna pay. Sometimes you're gonna pay. And well, I'm out of it now. This is pretty much home free as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I'm glad to be back on here. 1.9 kilometers back to my car as the crow flies. The boots are full of water, they're heavy, cold. Oh, I certainly know how to make things harder for myself. But, uh, you know, there's adventure involved too. Well, back to the car. So I'm looking at the description for High Noon Hills. It said, if you're up on that hill, down below in Long Prairie Creek, you can just spot the old shack of the South Sheep Stock Association camp, where cattle have been rounded up from the forest reserve since 1918. So it sounds like that ranch is still in use. I kind of thought that, you know, no. So I thought I would find some old, exactly, just a bunch of old shacks. But that bad boy was fully functional, man. All those fences were tended, the gates were tented. Yeah. Anyway, I hope I didn't... Uh, Press pass it or anything. I did my best to go around it. That was fun though. Those hills, that beautiful meadow all along Sheep River. That was a beautiful day. A lot of times it wasn't windy. Yeah, zero complaints. Get out there and hike. <laughs>